Hello everyone, my name is Cecil Shelton and for my NTAD 820 project I will be presenting on Trujillo, the dictator of the Dominican Republic. Trujillo was a dictator for over 30 years. Rafael Trujillo was born on October 24, 1891. Trujillo's rise to power started in 1919 when he enlisted in the Dominican National Guard which was being led by the United States military. The U.S. had taken control of the Dominican Republic's military in 1916 to help restore order to the country. He was trained by U.S. Marines. Trujillo impressed his commanding officers and rose to the ranks. Over nine years, he reached the rank of general. Through some backroom deals, Tr General Trujillo used the rebellion against the setting president to launch his campaign to become the next president in the new elections. General Trujillo was the presidential nominee for the newly created Dominican Party that was and was successful his, for his presidential bid. One reason for his success is because the army under rebel control would harass the other candidates and their supporters. Taking office on August 16, 1930, General, now Presidential Trujillo, immediately assumed dictator powers. We now know that the elections were fraudulent and that Presidential Trujillo received thousands more votes than there were voters. With this unethical election of Presidential Trujillo, his, well, his time in office was successful in terms that he had a strong environmental policy that helped develop national parks, hydroelectric dams, and help stop deforestation by banning slash and burn methods of land clearing. While he was in office, the country accepted both Jews and Japanese refugees fleeing persecution associated with World War II. However, his legacy is, a so is known as a ruthless, cold-blooded killer. While it was well known that he would kill anyone that did not support him or his political party, he was also responsible for the mass murder of 20,000 to 30,000 ethnic Haitians during an operation to rid his country of Haitians. This mass killing is now referred to as the Parsley Massacre by the English and the, court, or by the Cut by the Dominicans. Presidential Trujillo had his men search around the border of Haiti and the Dominican Republic, around the area which is now Gabon, is and have them execute any individual that identified the plant Parsley by its French name and not its Spanish name. The bodies of the executed were thrown into the river, which is now known as the Massacre River. The reasoning for this operation can be found in Presidential Trujillo's personal journal with an entry date dated October 2, 1937. For some months I have traveled and traversed the border in every sense of the words. I have seen, investigated, and inquired about the needs of the population. To the Dominicans who were complaining about the depreciation by Haitians living among them, theft of cattle, provisions, fruits, etc., and were thus prevented from enjoying in peace the products of their label, labor, I have responded, I will fix this. And we have already begun to remedy the situation. 300 Haitians are now dead in Bonica. This remedy will continue. After the termination of the Haitians from his country, he remained in power and killed anyone who opposed him until he was assassinated on May 30, 1961, in a roadside ambush. When he was assassinated, he was considered one of the wealthiest men in the world, having acquired over 50 million U.S. dollars. This concludes my presentation on Trujillo and the dictatorship that he held over the Dominican Republic that spanned for 30 years. I hope that this presentation was informational and that you have a greater understanding for the history of the Dominican Republic.